السلام عليكم رانا في ستانفورد اليوم كما قلت لكم راني جاست سبيكر في ستانفورد دونك حبيت ندير لكم هذا لا فيديو قبل ما ندخل الميكانيكال انجينير انستيتيوت اللي داروها تما دونك يحكي على سوبر كومبيوتين اند سوبر انتليجنس كيفاش تستعمل سوبر كومبيوتين ولا لي ريسورس تاع الكمبيوتين يعني جي بي يو سي بي يو من اجل Supercomputers of the day. I'll tell you a little more about this. And what is a supercomputer? There's a very simple definition, and this is at any given point in time, it's the most powerful computers that are out there for solving scientific and engineering problems. And that's a definition that's holding pretty much steady for history. And of course, it doesn't mean that it's the absolute most powerful because we have teraflop. Well, when I started out, we were talking about megaflop to gigaflop, and then gigaflop to tera. This is a project that is now almost a decade old, and we see a number of systems listed here. Right? And you see that in 21, there is a system Aurora that will be installed at Argonne National Labs, which is probably going to be the first exaflop system, real exaflop system in the US, and then. In 22, there will be another system installed at Open Chat Lab called Frontier. Uh, that will be the second exaflop system, but this is the key term market. And then two years ago, Bitcoin came along, and Vidya also took over the Bitcoin market. And so what you're seeing is, is that universal computing is getting uh, sort of chipped away, and the, the way of making progress is doing specialized computing. And consequently, unfortunately, high-performance computing is going to be on the niche because high-performance computing has been leveraged off the universal computing. And so the basis of innovation that has driven uh, the top 500, in particular, there's a lot of talk about uh, IoT, Internet of Things. That means there will be 25 billion or more devices uh, there will be sensors that are everywhere. You know that your car today has more microprocessors that were more made in the late 60s and said that he expects the number of transistors per chip units are domestically in China very successful in selling systems. So you see here two things is also the growth of a domestic China not only has built the number three and four system, but China also has um, caught up with the volume of systems in the top 500 and now has more supercomputers. And then 
talk about computing in the brain, and then uh, talk about what I think is probably hopefully while you're still around and uh, actively engaged, we uh, hope to get a lot of discussion about what computers still can't do. <coughs> so let me start out with the top 500 list. This is a project that I'm at this, and you can see the vortices spinning, which all happen to be tropical storms, hurricanes. And so, the, the question that I want to ask TPU, uh, in terms of addressing Google plays in here, that there are large players in this field of building these specialized architectures that are not necessarily brain inspired, but they are doing um, technology that is adaptive towards the um, machine learning world and then provide very low power and high performance company until, uh, that was bought out by Nirvana for 400 million. By the way, his brother is the CEO of Uber, Casey Walmart, it's the same name. Uh, so it's in running the family and the commission. So he sold his company to Intel, and now Intel is building this. And, this. and Amir, and I just put this up here because when I gave this class, I gave this lecture in, in, in the probably equivalent class to ME for it. Uh, in uh, CS267 in Berkeley, and I said, like, hey guys, uh, there are opportunities out there, even if you think high performance computing is boring, uh, uh, how are you still patient with me? And I think I will rush through the second part and then uh, get to the third part. And so the second part is about computing in the brain. I just wanted to show you this diagram because when you talk about computing in the brain, there are really three things that are out there. So there's our brain, then there's AI and machine learning, and then there's high performance computing. And you can look at these things and look at the six arrows that show how these three items interact. And so you can ask questions. For, for example, in terms of does the brain inspire new computer architectures for high performance computing? or how high performance computing is used in neuroscience to understand the brain, uh, how the brain can be used as a model for AI and machine learning, so of course it applied in terms of the neural nets with the physical dimensions, the weight, and how consumption is, the brain is acting a lot of it in a tiny space. Now, um, this is, this work that was done by my colleague Darmin Darmin and I'm, I'm in Almaden. And I just want to be very careful because it was very controversial when it was published first. Was, uh, what Darmin did, and since you make kind of this wishful thinking that's going on in the, in the community even today, even though these are fairly old slides, that uh, computing mar marches forward and will reach uh, the human compute power uh, sooner or later in everything. Now, I don't think so because I told you...